Holla ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher. And today I'm going to answer that question that many of you have been asking. My personal opinion on what the uh, my favourite tanks in Warlords of Draenor. Now this is uh, based on a few things. One is the Warlords of Draenor raid mechanics. They are a big factor in your tanking equivalent. Also ignoring certain things that people take for granted or sort of use as a kind of prop unnecessarily when it comes to deciding on a tank and that's things like overall damage. I always think it's quite poor to look at overall damage taken for what is best tank because that's just not how the game works. The game works on whether or not you can nullify various big and dangerous threats, not if your overall damage requires 1 or 2% more healing from the healers and therefore that's not the way we should be looking at tanks. It's not uh, to summarize, it's no good looking at how, how much damage a tank took over a five minute period. It's whether or not you could actually mitigate properly the danger that actually occurred during that five minutes. On top of that, I am ignoring level 90 as it is completely broken for tanks right now. Caps resolve and all that kind of stuff makes it a little bit wonky. And this again, most importantly, is my personal, personal opinion based on playing the tanks side by side. As Although we've done the final looks of the tanks individually, it's nice to look at them side by side. I will be doing it for the DPS and the healers as well, so no need to worry about that coming up. So, in at number one. In at number one, we'll start with what I believe is going to be the super tank, and it is the return of the king of the tanks, in my opinion, the warrior. At number one, yes, this is my absolute favourite. Really is, and it seems a glory to play in Warlords of Draenor at level 100. I truly believe the king of tanks has returned, the originator and the absolute stalwart who has survived many, many an expansion without being hammered into the ground. Why? That's the important one. Why? Their mit active mitigation system is really, really nice. As much as I believe Shield Barrier is weird and generally quite strange, it works very, very well, especially as you can combine it nicely and preemptively with both Shield Block and Shield Barrier. This makes uh, the major threats that any boss can throw at you really trivial. Absolutely trivial. Combined with that, one of the best talent systems in the game. Absolutely one of the best talent systems in the game that can cope with any and all situation. You can swap your character and play completely differently. Encounter to encounter. And that is absolutely vital in my opinion. The addition of Gladiator Stance. As much as I would have liked to have seen a tanking talent come in at level 100, it still doesn't matter because the rest of the talent tree is so, so cool. So, so cool. And it just it's a joy to be able to just say, oh, I can use this now. I can use that now. And that works as well. On top of that, yes, there's more. On top of that, the mobility. The mobility is amazing in Walls of Draenor Raids. There is no such thing as a static, static fight. The closest I've done is the Butcher. And that is a one-off, it's got to be said. The gruel, kind of the same. There's a couple of these one-off sort of patchworky style fights going on where tanking mobility is reduced. But overall, there is tons and tons of opportunity for mass mobility, moving around quickly and really showing off what your class can do. It has this unique flavour that really shines in Wilds of Draenor. Absolutely fantastic. And due to that, Warrior coming in at absolutely number one for me. I've had so much fun with it. I felt strong, I felt like my cooldowns were there when I needed them, I felt like my active mitigation did its job, and it just overall was just absolutely fantastic. Number two, the Paladin, the prop Paladin, what a guy, what a guy, he's just, ever since TBC, the prop Paladin just can't seem to be held down, it's got so much antiquated stuff that's been patched and band-aided, that it actually never seems to feel weak in any situation and that's awesome in walls of drain all they just got fun additions movable consecration avengers shield hitting multiple targets all this kind of stuff that wasn't necessarily needed or asked for but was given anyway really really cool and obviously we have on demand big magic cooldowns on demand big uh, ability to remove our debuffs event there's no doubt that you're going to be using things like Divine Shield, Cancel Aura Divine Shield, same with Bop. Purifying yourself is really cool in Walls of Draenor as well. We've pointed out in several videos how the debuffs and stuff are particularly nasty. And of course the Paladin can cope with those situations as well. On top of that, super reliable, on-demand, Shield of the Righteous, as always, as always, as many have seen throughout the game since it came into its existence really shines whenever you see something like triple attack all these kind of things coming on flurry all these big fast super hits that are coming hit in your face shield of the righteous just seems to make them go go away 
not a problem, dealt with. I've played all the tanks side by side on the same encounters, and sometimes I feel like I'm getting smacked in the face, sometimes I feel like, especially with a prop paladin, is that I can just put that shield up, similar to the warrior, and it's absolutely a non-issue. I also particularly like that Sacred Shield makes its return, seems to be the go-to in all that's going on, and that is an extra added on passive bonus, I would consider it a passive bonus, despite the fact that you activate it, it lasts so long, it does feel like a passive, and therefore works really well, the only downside to it, is a slight lack of mobility, it's got to be said, burst of speed, or speed of light, I should say, is fantastic, but it does have its uh, cooldowns, and that's got to be bared in mind, considering the multiple options the warriors have, and also a negative for me is the possibility of empowered seals, again, it's my personal opinion, I really dislike empowered seals, feels terrible, don't like it, in fact, I've got to say, mostly, I don't like any of the level 100 talents, holy shield seems great, as a nice passive, seraphim will have its place, there's no doubt about that whatsoever, it will have its place, but at the moment, it's still 5 holy power, for that very short term burst, there's 15 seconds burst of various stuff, but that will come into its own and be super powerful, there's no doubt about that whatsoever, I just personally dislike it, feels very too, very very much expensive almost at the cost of two shields of the righteous in order to make seraphim work and i believe that's a little touch too expensive i would like to have had the choice there even four would have been four holy power would have been more acceptable to me so it doesn't feel like i am trading up two shields of the righteous in order to get seraphim working but no doubt as those stats increase and it becomes more and more powerful it will find its place and will more than likely be the go-to which is something i'm not exactly overly excited about gotta be said not exactly overly excited about that Coming in at number three, and it's a close one, believe me, two and three are pretty much exactly the same. So bear in mind that these could both be number two for me, is the Death Knight. The Blood DK, what a horrible start it had in early wars. Horrible, horrible start, really broken, wasn't seem to be working out. Active mitigation was still wonky due to the inherent nature of Death Strike. All that kind of stuff, the old rune tap and having to glyph it to make it worthwhile. That was a big issue for me. But now with uh, the release style of gameplay really fun especially when you get your necrotic plague once the necrotic plague starts rolling you're not worrying like you are at level 90 you're doing some sort of plague leech stuff and then blood boiling the diseases around and all that kind of stuff really works out well the sad part about it is a little bit towards level 100s necrotic plague is really good breath of syndragosa now has a nice place as well got to be said, Breath of Cinder Ghost and now has a lovely, lovely place in the arsenal. Defile still seems relatively weak and it's just as a defensive cooldown. Not that I have an issue with that particularly. Got to be said, although I dislike it from a personal standpoint, it still gives 10% less damage to you for the thing studying your Defile. That is an extra cooldown on top of the multitude of cooldowns that Blood DKs have. Rune Tap, really nice now. Really, really nice now. Damage taken reduced by 40% for 3 seconds. A good DK can abuse that endlessly so cool especially again in terms of this active mitigation style that we've talked about and not just overall damage taken mix on top of that bone shield vampiric blood fucking death pact icebound fucking dancing rune weapon your choices just don't seem to end with a dk and no matter what something gets thrown at you you just answer back on top of that they don't have the mobility it's got to be said they don't have the mobility they have death's advance it's nowhere near as good as obviously leap charge and even speed of light but what it does have is absolute control really nice control doesn't translate well into raids though but of course gorfin's grasp and of course um what's it called christ i forgot the name which is absolutely ludicrous uh death grip death grip mixed in together you use them endlessly and obviously five bands are more prominent in walls of drain or it won't last forever we will move to raids where that as i said it doesn't really convert well but overall the strength and the play style and the less uh i know some people prefer the really perfectly timed death strike style i don't think that works out too well in overall stuff and i prefer the new style of death strike and makes it a little bit more less reactive one of the reasons I know people loved pulling off a really successful death strike after taking that huge hit and felt very skilled doing that, while that's understandable, I want that mitigation before I take that kind of stuff, yeah? I want to build up for those death strikes, and I, I'm okay with being a little bit more spammy with my death strikers. Still, it's important to time it well, no doubt about that, but it's nice to be able to be a little bit more preemptive with the death strike instead of waiting to take those big hits and not being so reliant on damage taken in order to prevent damage afterwards. I like it. I think it works really well. And personally, playing it around with all the different abilities, they're so unique. They have so much flavor, and that's what keeps them around the number two for me. So, now we're getting further down the list, and obviously people are going to get really mad at me. That's okay. That's okay. At number four, it's the Guardian Druid. 
at number four of the Guardian Druid for me, personally. Um, it falls to number four, and it does land at number four quite properly, is that I just cannot help but feeling like a huge sack of health, and that's it. Um, a Guardian Druid has so much potential for flavour, for uniqueness, and it doesn't seem to convey that in the Guardian for me at all. Uh, the significant reduction in abilities and huge emphasis on cooldowns doesn't play well compared to a DK. DKs have an immense amount of options in terms of being proactive in the fight instead of just being reactive and waiting for which cooldown should I press now. Ultimately, whenever I play my Guardian, I'm just rolling cooldowns back to back one after the other over and over and over and over again. Does it work? Yes, absolutely absolutely works they still contain a little bit of mobility you can move in your wild charge and all that kind of stuff and it works it does work it does feel super basic to me super basic in terms of the abilities but as we've seen some people really like a super basic style of tank so there you go if that's something you're after then that's going to be more beneficial to you for my personal opinion i want a little bit more option I want a few more tools. I want a few more fun things to be able to throw out there that are really making me feel like uh, a guard, a druid. I really feel like a druid and not things like Ursul's Vortex and Typhoon and all these kind of choices, which are situationally useful sometimes. But if you compare it to, say, a warrior who can just be, like, tailor-made to certain encounters, it doesn't hold a candle next to each other. And that's, that's my issue with the Guardian Druid. Another issue I have with it is I still very much dislike uh, Frenzied Rejuvenation. I dislike this ability to no end. It's boring, a straight up heal. Doesn't seem to have any uniqueness to it. Savage, de Savage Defense. And of course, on top of that is either Guardian of Loon if you're not taking Pulverize, which is unlikely to happen because Pulverize is so powerful yet boring i guess this is my issue with it is that a lot of the things just feel flat out boring in what they do are they powerful yes there's no doubt about that and the garden druid will have no issue tanking as most of the tanks are actually very much balanced but in terms of its actual play style comparatively to the other tanks it just doesn't seem to match up anywhere close for me i feel like a big sack of health who can easily tank stuff no problem with that whatsoever but lacking fun and that's something I think is quite important if you're going to be playing something for a long time. I feel like it lacks fun. Frenzied Rejuvenation, even with high resolve, just feels, certainly in the early level 100 content, feels next to useless in many occasions. And I dislike that entirely compared to what I can do with the active mitigation of other tanks. So as you probably guessed then, coming in at number 5, what I consider to be my personal, and it makes me really sad to say this, is the Monk my personal opinion and there's a number of reasons for that i love the gameplay of the brewmaster monk that's something you got to bear in mind here i absolutely adore it if this was a gameplay based thing and what times i have the most fun on uh, the windwalk uh, the brewmaster would be way way up there it would be it would be either number one or number two gameplay wise i absolutely adore this thing it's so cool all the things i talked about with the guardian is having unique flavor and interesting stuff and choices to be made the brewmaster has that in spades but when playing it i have never felt as weak and as reliant on a decent healer as i do on a brewmaster even with the four piece set bonuses now this isn't due to balancing issues it's really down to my sort of oh shit moments and those happen quite a lot there's a huge emphasis now on stagger removal which is no big deal because you use it about as often as shield of the righteous or shield block so it's although it's higher than it tends to be in uh, earlier mists of pandaria let's say not the current pre-patch level it still feels like boring is the purifying brew and even when reducing my stagger level to real minimum levels i still feel like i'm heavily reliant on other people to pull me out in comparison we have several cooldowns of choice here but none of them seem really effective especially when you're comparing it to things like bristling fur vampiric blood rune tap for christ's sake a 40 percent damage reduction on demand for three seconds when it really counts mixed with bone shield or shield block shield barrier combos and even shield of the righteous you spin a lot of plates. I always feel like the Monk should be one of the most powerful tanks. Inherently. And purely because you spin a lot of plates. You're keeping up Tiger Palm. You're keeping up Elusive Brew. You're purifying yourself. You're keeping Shuffle up. You're doing all these things. You're doing all these things as a natural precursor before you do anything else. These are the things you need to get rolling and spinning throughout an encounter all the time. Now, many people find that very easy. If we compare it to another tank... 
say the guardian where most of their absorbs comes from things like mastery and primal tenacity which it will happen if you press a button or not you've got to bear that in mind and with the brewmaster there's very much a case of getting all this stuff rolling i generally feel like a really well played brewmaster should always feel like super strong i never feel that way currently in wallows of draenor never feel that way feel super weak a little bit panicky from time to time i've got to be said and it does come down to if i have a super powerful healer then it's no big issue but but on an average uh, outside of raiding it's all very well and good comparing tanks side by side if you've got a super guild who can keep you alive regardless when you really start to see the strengths and weaknesses of a tank is when you're actually playing in different environments and you're putting them side by side there. I did lots of stuff on the Brewmaster and still did just felt like I'm, I'm in a problem situation here. What are my choices? And my choices are Expel Harm, which doesn't do a great deal even with Resolve so far, uh, outside of raiding anyway. Guard which is fine and well and good, but tends to get eaten up pretty quickly. It tends to get eaten up pretty quickly. And other than that, it's the stuff I'm already doing. I usually have my elusive brew up. I've already purified my stagger. And outside of that, I've got fortifying brew waiting to save me. And that just doesn't feel good enough for me. It doesn't feel good enough in the new environment. It doesn't feel good enough when I'm side by signing it with everything else. Who has way more choices in these situations. And it's never nice to feel helpless as a tank. With high gear, monks will no doubt be super powerful again. There's a huge fear that monks will go back to their sort of 5.1-ish, 5.2 days where they were getting munched up until they got high amounts of gear in order to stop being munched up and start letting the normal mitigation roll, which they are designed around, really kick into high gear. I kind of feel that they are going to go back to that stage where they're just getting munched and munched in comparison to everything else while doing more. And it's got to be said, that is something you've got to bear in mind, is if you're doing a lot more, which you are as a brewmaster, maybe you should be able to pull off some moments of absolute spectacular wizardry. And I don't feel that. I don't feel that whatsoever. The loss of Clash is a huge bummer. It was nice to have that extra mobility. And as I said, mobility is very, very cool in Warlords of Draenor. Clash can't be used on bosses, but there are many significant moments where Clash was very useful in terms of raiding. And yeah, that's my feeling on it. It's, it feels like the weakest despite doing the most. And that's why I've rated it at number five. Can it tank everything? Yeah, it can. It can indeed, it can. It can deal with those things, it can deal with those big scary moments, it can do all that. But for me, in comparison to everything else, and that's what you've got to bear in mind, in comparison to everything else, I feel like I have more fun, and I have more choices, I have more uniqueness, I have more abilities to do things that are more interesting with the other tanks in general. Alright guys, there's my list. Feel free to rage away. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye.